Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I'm your host, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, helping you whip your business into shape. Today, I have with me Molly Claire. Now, Molly Claire is a master life and business coach and a master coach instructor for female coaches and service-based entrepreneurs. She offers a high-level holistic master coach certification and also helps coaches create a killer program that gets results for their clients. Molly authored the best-selling book, The Happy Mom Mindset. Oh, might have to get a copy of that. And host the Masterful Coach podcast. Molly built her business from scratch, building it to multiple six figures and scaled an online program to seven figures. She is passionate about helping women overcome their limiting beliefs to build a profitable and meaningful business that supports their ideal life. She loves to instill confidence, self-love, and self-belief into every woman she meets. Her greatest joy in life is being a mom of three and building meaningful connections with her family and friends. Molly, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Oh my gosh. I like I'm so interested. So how did you get to where you are now? What what got you into coaching? Because every one of us has a slightly different story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I found my way to coaching. I actually, um, I've been a coach now for 10 years. And when, before going to my training, I was going through a bit of a personal crisis as sometimes happens to us, right? Which can be the catalyst for great things. And I was just, it was like all these things were coming up at once. I was struggling in my marriage. I was, um, I was trying to heal from chronic fatigue syndrome. I had three little kids and I just, it was like all this stuff, just even from my past was just coming up everywhere. And I had a short coaching session um, with someone who was getting certified. She said, Hey, I need to practice. Can you just do this for me as a favor? And I still remember I was on the phone with her. I was walking around pacing on my back porch and she was walking me through this coaching process. And it was one of those moments where everything was going in slow motion because I could see that my mind was opening up to a totally new way of seeing things like in a huge way. Right. Mm. And so I just remember this session being so impactful for me. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is something and this is something I want to do. I want to coach people like this one day. And then as it, as it would turn out, within a couple months of that, I got a message that the school where she went was offering one more training, you know, live and the founder was teaching it. And so it was like, this is bad timing. And one day became, I'm doing this right now, no matter what. And <laughs> um, I did the training and I immediately dove into building my business. I did master coach training. I started training coaches and I just, I mean, it's, it's been completely life-changing for me. So that was kind of, that was how it all began. Ah, oh, fantastic. Yeah. And so with all of this, you know, looking through some of the things in, in the preparation for this conversation, one mm -hmm. of the things that came up was limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. So, and I know there are a lot of people who talk about limiting mm -hmm. beliefs. But what I'd like to know, and because this is something that I'm sure anybody who is starting to delve into the self-development world is, okay, so how do I find my limiting beliefs? Because if it's a <laughs> limiting belief, right? Like we believe it. So right? it sure doesn't seem limiting. <laughs> right. So yes. let's start with the, how do we find our limiting beliefs? Because we can't address them till we know where they are. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, so first I just want to say like, we all have 
limiting beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. And so I can identify a limiting belief and I can move past that. Like I'll give you a perfect example. So when I, I did end up getting divorced and when I was going through my divorce, I was so panicked about money. Mm. And I know a lot of your audience can relate to this, right? There's so much fear that we have around money. And I was moving toward divorce and I live in Texas. And, you know, at the time, as I mentioned, I still was not totally well from chronic fatigue syndrome. I had three little kids. I'd been primarily a stay at home mom for most of my marriage, all of this, right? So I was panicked and I live in Texas and I learned that there was no alimony in Texas. And I just remember thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was in a panic. So I'm on a coaching call with my mentor and she said to me, well, why don't you just make as much money as he does? And this seemed like an absurd question to me. Okay. (laughs) And I said to her, I said, well, he makes a lot of money. And just like her question seemed absurd to me, my answer seemed absurd to her. Right. And she said, so why don't you make as much money as he did? And so this was one of those moments where I realized that I had a belief that I could not make as much money as him because I was a woman. That is what I found in it, right? I was like, oh no, I do not like that that is there. And so, and I can tell you a little more about that, but just coming back to your question, like how Mm -hmm. do we find these limiting beliefs? It's really from questioning questioning what we're saying, questioning what we're thinking, questioning what we're believing, right? So for your clients who are, or your listeners who are, you know, saying things like, I'm not good at sales, you know, I can't make enough money, there's never enough money coming in, like all those kind of things that we say, we just think that they're observations, but they're actually thoughts and beliefs that are impacting what we're actually creating. So Mm. questions is the answer. Ask yourself questions and challenge what you believe to be true. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh. Absolutely. Because anybody who's listening to this right now probably listened to the episode where I interviewed Shiraz Babu and he was very good, like in the middle of the show, started challenging, some, mm-hmm. like asking me questions of like, that's the importance of questions, y'all. It's the, it's mm-hmm. the ability to go, well, why can't that happen? And then you now have to come up with, or why could that happen? Or how could you make that happen? Or, you know, that's when things begin to shift, right? Is that that a way of doing that, right? So I just want to point out to people, if you guys want to hear the process, because he literally Mm -hmm. took me through that. And the challenging piece is what what helps you to begin to shift. And so... In the challenging part, let's go there Mm -hmm. because I know my, my personal reaction in going through that, there were some literal bodily reactions, but then also Mm -hmm. like thoughts that happened at the time. And so Mm -hmm. as we challenge, how do you work with your clients Mm -hmm. to begin Mm -hmm. to process through what happens in the body and the mind? Yeah, yeah. So, and there are so many things, right? And I, but I want to, I know this is like a short interview and I want to make sure this is super relevant. Your clients Uh can think about this or I keep calling them clients. Your listeners can, (laughs) can take action, right? Sure. So I'll go back to this, this example that I offered up, right? So she's asking me this immediately. The answer that came to my mind was, well, because I'm a woman, I didn't want that to come out of my mouth, but that's what was there. And, and, and I remember because I was so well trained in the space of exactly what we're suggesting your audience does of ask questions. Question, is this true? How is it true? How is it not true? What else is possible, right? Asking these kind of questions. I remember at the time thinking, wait a minute, my mentor who's asking me this makes uh, more money than he does. And she is a woman. And then I remember thinking about all the other women that I knew that made way more money than he did. And I was like, this can't be true that I can't make as much money as he is Mm -hmm. because I'm a woman, because other women are doing it. And so I'll tell you what I did and and exactly how this is relevant for your listeners, because I think this is a really powerful and very simple, clear process. So at the time, I remember deciding it's not acceptable for me to believe I can't make as much money because I'm a woman. 
It's not acceptable for me. And one day, and at the time, the amount was $250,000 a year. This was like, oh my gosh, like this would be unbelievable, right? Like this is crazy talk is what I was thinking. Right. And so at the time I decided one day I will believe that I am capable of making $250,000. I will believe it and I will be making that money. And so one of the things that I suggest actually to your listeners is thinking about what is that I'm going to refer to it as an identity, but there, there are many different pieces of our identity, right? But like one thing is I wanted to identify as a woman who made $250,000 a year consistently. Yes. And so I chose one day, I will believe that I will be that. And so as you're listening to this, each of you, I want you to think, imagine like, like there is a mountain. Okay. and. And I decided that at the top of this mountain, the journey I was going toward at the top of this mountain was this place where I was a woman who made $250,000 a year. And I knew that I could. Hmm. And for each of you, you can think about, okay, if, if the top of this mountain had this identity I wanted to claim, maybe it's a certain income level, a certain number of, you know, uh, sales, um, sales associates or people underneath you, right? Whatever Mm -hmm. it is, claim that that is where I'm going. And then I like to think about it as the path up this mountain is going to be full of things like places that are slippery, prickly bushes, rocks. Maybe you're going to get a little winded. Gravity's working against you, right? All those kind of things. And I like to equate each of those things with things like other limiting beliefs along the way thoughts that aren't helpful, right? Mm -hmm. Fears, insecurities, um, inadequacies, the challenges of life. And so I think there's so much power in saying, I know this is where I'm going to be one day. And I don't have to believe it all now. I don't have to do it all now, but I can decide that every step along the way, I'm going to accept and meet every challenge and figure it out. And I can speak more to those because I know that's kind of vague, um, but, but that's kind of a really good starting point is, Figure out what is it I want to identify it as? What do I want to believe? Think about that and commit to it. And then you have your plan along the way to overcome all those little pieces that come mm. up. Oh my gosh, that's powerful. <laughs> I No, I love that because the visualization of that does make it easier than the nebulous, I'm going to be this person who inserts yes. achievement here, right? Yes, um, yes. Which can feel very, you know, because some people are great at visualization. Other people are not so great at the visualization. So by having something very concrete, like thinking about going up a mountain and knowing that, yeah, hey, look, climbing a mountain isn't always easy. There's going That's to be things right. that are going to pop up, right? Cause yes. it, it's because just life. It's like, otherwise, it's like, oh, one day I'll do that. And it's this very vague thing. And then we start to think that we have to be confident every minute. We have to be like in belief all the time, right? We have these big grandiose things as if, oh, well, if I'm really going to achieve that, then it has to feel good and exciting and motivating all the time. And I, especially that I hear that all the time. People say, "I, I know I need to be in belief more. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe, or maybe you can decide one day I'm going to be there and some days I'm going to believe and some days I'm not believing at all. And it doesn't matter because I know that I will get there as I stay the course. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not the first time we've heard those, (laughs) those (laughs) words, uh, stay the course is something that, that has popped up on the show before, right? It's the, you know, especially in the world of direct sales and network marketing and just entrepreneurship in general, Yep. The only way to fail in this industry, in entrepreneurship, is to give up. 100%. That's right? the only way. If you quit, you will ultimately fail. Yeah. But as long as you don't quit, yeah. you're going to get there if you, right. if you commit to getting there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so it's just knowing you know, where the finish line is, or at least where that benchmark is. Because... I imagine, given that your business did not stop at six figures, Mm -hmm. that you got Mm -hmm. to seven figures, that the top of the mountain where you were making $250,000 just showed you another mountain, (laughs) right? Yeah, I mean, and that's such a good point because I think that 
for everyone, there are always going to be limits that we will see that we want to challenge and overcome. Yeah. And, 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 and it may not even be a mountain that builds on that, right? But something different, maybe at the top of your mountain is having a better relationship, right? Maybe at the top of your mountain is having better connection in your, you know, family life or having better, you know, life business balance. And so, yes, it's like there, there is no, this is a funny thing to say, right? But there's no limit to the amount of limiting beliefs we can <laughs> just overcome yeah. and work toward really claiming whatever it is we want in our life and in our identity, anything we want, really. Mm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. And so part of this too, then, because you, you began to allude to it with the conversation about limiting beliefs was sometimes I'm going to believe it and sometimes I'm not right. And a part that fits into that is confidence. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know, especially mm -hmm. in the world of sales in the world of recruiting in the mm -hmm. world of leadership, confidence mm -hmm. is a, big part of that limiting beliefs and being able to do those things. So yeah, let's, let's move into the confidence conversation. Cause that's, that fits in with the limiting beliefs, I think quite yes. nicely. So yeah, I can tell you, I don't always feel confident. <laughs> of course not. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, and I think, I think that's the key. It's like, so, and something that Part of the work I do with my clients in helping them to really support their clients in creating change in their life, in moving limiting beliefs, in building confidence, right, is, is that I like to think of it as each person as like a whole human being, right? So here mm -hmm. you and I are talking, you have certain ways of thinking, you have certain yeah. beliefs, you have certain emotional patterns. So for example, when something challenging comes up or seems like a failure, you have certain emotions you will typically go to. And the emotions I go to in that moment may be slightly different. Okay. Okay. So we all have, so here you are in front of me, right? You have certain thought patterns, you have th certain emotion patterns, and you also have a nervous system that can sometimes, right? We yeah. can have triggered responses. We can go into fight or flight. So that's something we want to be aware of. And I know this is a lot, but I, I promise I'm going to bring this down a little simpler. <laughs> and then you also have certain action patterns, right? Yep. And so there are just certain ways that you tend to react, certain things you have built into your life. So the reason I'm bringing up this, this whole picture of, of you know you listening as a person is that I think it's important to recognize that as you're climbing that mountain and as you're building your confidence, of course, there are times when your thought patterns are going to go to a place of not thinking confidently. Yeah. Of course, your emotions are going to go to a place of instead of feeling confident, feeling insecure or whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? So of course, those things are going to come up. And I think the important thing to remember is it doesn't matter because just because you're not feeling confident in this moment doesn't mean you can't feel confident in the next moment. Mm. I think it's important to think of confidence as a muscle that you're building because I think sometimes we can think, oh, I'm either confident or I'm not. Mm -hmm. But instead thinking about what are the ways I am confident? Yeah. Where are the areas where it's easy for me to feel confident. And why is that? And where are the areas that I would like to have more confidence? And what are some small things I can do to create that? Like building evidence for myself that I'm capable. And so uh, all that to be said, going up the mountain is full of setbacks. It's full of insecurities. It's full of all of it. It doesn't matter. How can you build one more, like, like one more little droplet of confidence every step of the way. Mm, that I think is so important. So, you know, thinking of confidence as something that you can uh, build up, you know, like yes. muscles at a gym, right? Going through yes. every little thing that you do makes you more confident that that sales conversation you have, the recruiting conversation that you have, the, yep. the, 
things that you do. So one of the things that I do when working with my clients on their leadership skills Mm -hmm. is it helps you to be more confident if you understand leadership, if you learn leadership practices. Yes, yes, that's right. right. It's it sometimes is because people are like, oh, my gosh, they're a born leader. No, no, they are not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're not. They learned yeah. skills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And you know what this is making me think of? So I think even like your listeners, if we think about, I'm going to keep coming back to this mountain example, because yeah. I think this is going to be really something that they can wrap their head around. So maybe at the top of that mountain is a confident version of you. Mm-hmm. And whatever that means, right? That maybe you're confident in a recruiting conversation confident with sales, whatever it is. And I think getting really clear on what exactly that means, right? Like when I'm confident in this, what are the things around me that show me that I'm confident, right? Mm. And then having a plan for climbing that mountain is imperative. So like what you're saying is one of the things that you can do to move toward that confidence is in a practical sense, learn about leadership, Mm -hmm. right? One of the things you can do is challenge the idea that maybe you're not good at leadership, right? And so I think with with anything that your audience is wanting to create, and, and specifically with confidence, thinking about, okay, if I had more confidence, what would be easier? What would be better? That's what I'm working toward. Now, what is the plan for getting there? What are the supplies I'm bringing on the hike to help me <laughs> get there? What skills? What mindset? What emotion support? Mm-hmm. And and am I really deciding that no matter how much I lack confidence now, one day I'm going to have the confidence that I want? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to throw in there the importance, because if you've never climbed a mountain, right? <laughs> and if you've if you've never. I, I don't know how many people have maybe read. Oh. Now, I've totally blanked on the name of the book, but there's a book written by a blind mountain climber. Mm. And in that book, he talks about the Sherpas that because he climbed Mm. Everest. Mm. Okay, blind man climbed Everest, right? He had guides. Who are the guides who are going to take you along the way? Because like, how many of us have ever climbed a mountain before? Not me. (laughs) Oh, I know. If you knew how many guides I hire, I mean, I I have people supporting me emotionally, my mindset, all of it, because I know this stuff. I teach this stuff. I live it. I breathe it. And I need someone to help me Yeah, because I can't see what I can't see in myself. And don't we, isn't it nice to have support and help? Yeah. I mean, come on, <laughs> especially as women, we are handling everything all the time. It's right. like, Mindful of the kids, mindful of my clients, right? Mindful of the dogs, paying the bills, all the things. So, yeah, come on, let's have a little help. It's nice, <laughs> uh, exactly. And that's the great thing is because the 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 guide, the Sherpa, has been up the mountain, has probably that's been right. up the mountain lots of times, that's <laughs> right? Right. And that's why it's key to when you're when you're looking at who you're going to bring in as a guide. Have they done it before? <laughs> And mm-hmm. how many times have they done it before, right? Have mm-hmm. they have they taken people up that mountain? How mm-hmm. many do do they do it one on one? Do they do mm-hmm. it in a group? That's also mm-hmm. helpful too. But mm-hmm. I, I love that anou- that mountain climbing analogy is fantastic because it really does help you see. Okay, here's the, there there is a goal, right? It doesn't mean yeah. it's the end goal. That that goal post may move once you hit the the summit because yeah yeah there's always other taller mountains unless you're on <laughs> unless you're on Earth because Everest is it <laughs> yeah 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 that's right but I love the analogy including all the the skills and the tools and the what are the supplies you're bringing with you and planning all of that out talking to mm-hmm. the guides finding out mm-hmm. who your options are who else is climbing the mountain with you because mm-hmm. it doesn't mm-hmm. just have to be with a guide who else do you want to bring with you especially that. in the world of direct sales and network marketing guys oh my gosh right like alone. having having good energy around you it's so important yeah and, and i you know as human beings we are wired for connection and and women we really we really thrive when we're in connection and in relationship. 
Right. I mean, Plus, it's just it's more fun. Yeah, it definitely is more fun. Yeah. I mean, what's popping up for me? Sorry, my brain is just trying to go in 17 different directions all at the yeah. same time with this. <laughs> what's popping up for me, though, most prominently is just thinking through the number of people who join our industry, direct sales, network marketing and multi-level marketing, because they didn't have an Ohana. They didn't have a family. They didn't have adults to talk to, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. wanted the community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. oh, I can also make money while I do this? Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in the research that I've done in our industry, 87% of people are not motivated by money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not motivated by it. So mm -hmm. what are they motivated by? Community. So mm -hmm. if you want to grow a business, work on your limiting beliefs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yes. visualize up on the mountain, right? And, and yep. who's, in, who's in your climbing party? That's right. And, and I think also, you know, those of you that are listening, that if you're not motivated by money, I think that, I think it can actually work against us when we think we should be motivated by something or you have to be money motivated in order to make money because that's not true at all. Right. And so like, I mean, especially, you know, in the, with my clients, the industry I'm in, I'm attracting all the helpers, right? The people that come to me, they're the helpers, the do-gooders of the world. They're like the best people to be around. And yes, they know they need to make money to sustain their business, but they're motivated by impacting people. And so that has to be at the forefront of their goals and money goes hand in hand with it. They're not, you know, they're not mutually exclusive at all. They work together. But like those of you listening, if you're not really motivated by money, but yet you do know you want to make money, it's fine to have whatever you're motivated by be the thing and then just figure out how the money comes right along with it. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I could continue talking about that. We, oh, right. But we've yeah. already addressed how to yeah. find your limiting beliefs, how to begin to overcome them. And yep how confidence plays into all of this as well. And I know that there's so much more we could discuss. Mm -hmm. Yes, and. So <laughs> I'm sure a good number of the Badass crew has really enjoyed this and they probably want to learn more from you and experience more with you, Molly. So if they wanted to learn more and you, you have this really cool opportunity for the Badass crew, to be able yeah. to learn more and, and take a next step with you. So tell us about the gift you have for the Badass Crew. Okay. So you're all here. You obviously like to listen to podcasts. So what I have is you can get access to a private podcast. It's just a pop-up podcast. It is three short and sweet episodes. And it's really great for you. This is why. I know many of you listening are wanting to build your business and you also are wanting to have balance in your life. And I find that when our life and our business are in competition, it's one of the number one things that will cause you to self-sabotage and shut down. And so I have this opportunity for you, you to listen to this three-part private podcast where I am going to help actually walk you through the exact process I do when I start with my clients of helping them to put together their ideal life and business vision. It is the most phenomenal foundation that you can ever have for your business. So everyone should get it. Yes. Oh my gosh, that sounds fantastic. So how can they access this private podcast? Because if it's private, <laughs> how yes, are we going to find yes, it? <laughs> yes. So if you go to uh, www.myperfectbiz.com, you can, you can just sign up there. And you will get access to the private podcast. You'll have all of those episodes. And, and certainly if anyone wants to find out more about me or what I do, they can go to mollyclair.com. So, you know, I help coaches and consultants create a program. And then I also do this, of course, this master coach work that I am crazy passionate about because, you know, there are, there are a lot of people suffering in the world and wanting to change their lives. And I think we can help them do it.
Oh, fantastic. All right. So yeah. my regular badass crews, those who have been listening for years now or even just many, many episodes, they already know to check the show notes for the link to get the pop-up private podcast uh, to help you get your perfect vision of your life. And so check the show notes. Now, if this happens to be the very first time you've ever listened to this podcast and you're like, show notes, what are the show notes? All you have to do is grab your phone or look below the YouTube video that you are watching right now in the description. And we have links right there so you can connect to mollyclaire.com and also myperfectbiz.com. And you don't have to worry about spelling it right because you just click the link. Super easy. So Molly, this has been fan freaking tastic. I I personally have taken away a, a something here. I appreciate you in sharing this with my audience. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me. I hope everyone's gotten something out of it. And I, I think it's just great to remember, like whatever you want to create or do, we really can do it. We have all these limiting beliefs, but they're just nonsense. You can do it. So let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love it. I, I forget who said it, but if you if the mind can uh, believe it, you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it just oh, it's if, true. If the mind can believe it, I think that's the key, right? And so, mm -hmm. getting past those lim limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. a woman can make, <laughs> and not just any woman. This woman, <laughs> that's can right. Make. <laughs> you listening, you women listening, you you can make money. Right. You can make money. You can build a business of impact, helping yep. other people, all of it. I mean, and this is like a whole other thing, but I, one of the things I t like to teach and I really believe is true. I think as women, we are born to make money. I really do. I think mm -hmm. we have so much creative energy and power and we're so good at giving and receiving. And I just, I think women are born to make money. We just need to kind of flip that switch and make it happen. I agree. Yes. <laughs> I agree. All right. So thank you again for being here and sharing your brilliance, Molly. And of course, thank Badass you. Crew, make sure you go check the show notes and click on those links so that way you can access uh, the private pop-up podcast from Molly and also check out what else she has to offer through her podcast as well. So thanks again for being here and stay tuned because there is another badass episode on its way. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to badassdirectsalesmastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.